guys, and welcome to week three tutorial. Uh, this week we'll be making a game called Space Shooter. It's reminiscent of some of those old um, arcade shooter games like uh, Space Invaders. So we're going to click on New Project. We're going to make sure we name our project Space Shooter. We're going to make sure we select SD Portrait 9x16, not 16x9. So make sure that the orientation says Portrait. I'm going to click create. Just click anywhere in the gray space and we're going to change the layout size to 480 by 854. So this should be all pretty natural to us by now. This is our third week of video tutorials. We're going to rename our layouts. So we're going to come to the top right and we're going to rename it to game and our event sheet to game event. So the first thing we're going to do in this tutorial is make our player and give it some movement. So we're going to do that as quick as possible. Uh, one thing I remind you guys is that you want to do the tutorial as fast as possible. And then at the end, once you're finished, come back and make your character really pretty. I don't want to see people spending an hour making their player look really good. And then they don't actually get to make the game. So you don't actually learn anything that way. So we're just going to quickly insert an object. So right click insert. We're going to click on Sprite and we're going to name it Player. Um, I'm going to make mine a triangle. So we've done triangles quite a lot, so this should be quite a natural shape for you guys to do. And don't forget to change your collision polygons. Now, one extra thing that we didn't do last time is I'm going to add an additional origin point. Now, this point will be used to spawn our laser beam later on. So we're going to click on this button here, which is just above our collision polygons. This will give us a whole new menu. You've got to be careful not to move the current origin. So the current origin, origin one, will be right in the middle of your object. What you want to do is come to the top left underneath origin and you want to right click add a new image point and with that selected you want to click right on the nose of your player just like that try and get it as center as possible it can be quite tricky there you go awesome and then we're going to close so we've got our player he's pretty huge so we're going to change the size to 50 by 50 that's a bit better and we're going to give our player some behaviors. So click on the player. On the left of the screen, you have behaviors. I'm going to add a behavior and we're going to add bound to layout. This just means our player won't go running off the edge. We're going to add another object now. And this will be the mouse. So our, our game is going to function by mouse movement. So wherever the, the mouse goes, our player will follow. So we're going to quickly flick over to the game event sheet. So either click on it on the top or on the top right hand side of project the under event sheets, there's game event. Just double click on that and it'll take you here. We're going to add an event. System. And we're looking for every tick. And our action will be player. set x and we're going to set the x of the player to always be mouse dot x so this means wherever that mouse is across the screen the player will follow and we're going to make sure we save before we test so menu project save as and we're going to save it to the local browser and just click save now we're going to try it out and we've got really cool movement straight away. Now that we've got our player and some movement, let's add in our enemies. So we're going to right click insert object. It's going to be a sprite. And I'm going to name my first enemy just enemy. 
and it is also going to be a triangle. So we just use the line tool to create our triangles. Fill it with the bucket. And again, make sure we change our collision polygon. Cool. So we're now going to flip it 90 degrees to the right or clockwise. So up the top here, you're looking for rotate 90 degrees clockwise. clockwise. And if we click on that, that's exactly what we want. So we're going to make this 45 by 45 in size. And we're just going to move it up here. We're going to create our second enemy now. We click on Sprite again, and we're going to name this Enemy 2. This one's going to be a, different, a bit different, sorry. I'm going to make the, mine a diamond. This can be quite tricky. I'm sure you guys will get it. I'm just going to draw as much of a diamond as we possibly can. Cool. It's a bit off center, but it's a bit wonky as well, but it'll be fine. It gets the job done. Then we're going to click on Edit Collision Polygons and we're just going to move them across to match all the points. I might just clean up my lines a bit. Again, do not spend a lot of time making this. You, you just want to get the core code and the concepts of the lessons done. So we're going to name, um, sorry, we're going to resize this to 45 by 45 as well. And now we're going to add the behaviors of the objects. So if we click on enemy, we're going to go behavior. We're going to add the bullet behavior. Now for enemy two, we're going to add a behavior and the same behavior, bullet. But we're also going to add sign on the on its behavior. So one enemy will just come straight towards you, and the other one will move side to side as it comes down, being a little bit more difficult. While we're here creating objects, um, we're also going to create a family. So if you come to your right hand side under your project bar, you're looking for the folder named families, and you want to right-click and add a family. And we're going to add enemy and enemy two. And then click OK. And we're going to rename this family Enemies. If you accidentally clicked out of it, you can just click back on Family 1 and right click Rename. Before we move on to coding our enemies, we're going to add one more object. So I want you to go right click Insert. And we're looking for Sprite. And we're going to call this Destroy Bar. Basically, when the enemies touch this bar, you lose the game. Um, the color doesn't matter because it will be off screen anyway. And we're just going to drag it underneath our layout. And we're going to make it the same length as our layout. That way, if any enemy falls through the map and they touch this bar, we lose the game. So you want to give it some room just in case one of the sign behaviors don't go around it. All right, that's good. Now that we've created our enemies, it's time to figure out how we're going to randomly spawn them on the screen. So there's a few things we need to do here, and it can be quite complicated. The first thing I need you to take note of is that at the bottom of your screen down here, you have this thing called mouse, <clears throat> along with two numbers. So these two numbers show you the X and Y coordinate of where your current mouse is. So if we wanted to spawn our enemy above the map around here, we would have to take note of its X and Y of the mouse. So the mouse is now 40, 60, so that's pretty good. And we want to move it all the way across and find the next good point. So about 440 and 40 is where we want to spawn our objects. So we're going to come across to our game event. Again, you can click at the top or double click on game event on the right hand side. And we're going to press Q and we're going to write that down. So Q creates a comment, which lets us 
write down or not, jot down any ideas about our code. So we're going to type in 40, comma, 440 by negative 60. So this is the range that we want to randomly spawn our objects. Cool. Now I'm going to create a global variable called random that will decide which object we need to spawn, either enemy one or enemy two. So I'm going to right click, add global variable, and I'm going to call it rand. So this will be our random number that we hold. Now let's do an event. <clears throat> so if you right click, add event, system, and we're looking for every X seconds, which is right at the bottom. We're going to change the initial seconds to 0 0.5. And then in the action, we're going to set random to either one or two. So to do that, we just add an action. System. And we're looking for set value. And the variable we choose is random. And under value, we take away the zero and we're going to type choose. Bracket. One comma two. Bracket. So this code means we're going to choose between one or two evenly. So there's right now there's a 50% chance we choose one and a 50% chance we choose two. And then we're going to click on our code just on our, so if you click right at the left side of the code, it'll light up all of it. And we're going to right click and go add, add sub event. We go system. And we're going to compare the variable random. And if random is equal to one, and then we are going to do our code to spawn our first enemy. So we just click add action. Make sure you're adding an action under rand equals one. System create object. And make sure it's not by name, but just create object. I'm going to choose the object, which is enemy. And this is where we use our X and Y that we got earlier. So we need to type in random bracket 40 comma 440. So its X will be randomed between 40 and 440. And its Y will always be negative 60. We're going to add another action underneath for enemy. And it's just going to be rotate clockwise 90 degrees. Now we're going to click on this code, just the random code. So again, left click, <clears throat> left click on the left side of random equals one, and that'll highlight the whole section. And then we just press X, and that'll give us an else statement, and this will be for two. So we're gonna copy and paste this code here. And once it's pasted and highlighted, again, I'll, sh I'll show you again. All we do is click on both of these. So if you hold control and click on the second code, it'll highlight them both. Control, paste, and then we click on the left side of the else statement and we right click and go replace object enemy two. And we're gonna try that out. So make sure you save. And now every half a second, it'll spawn either a, a diamond or a triangle, and it'll be random between the two. Now that we have enemies that randomly spawn, and we've tried our game, you would have seen that the two enemies that we initially have on the screen um, don't behave quite right, and they need to disappear. So we're going to destroy them when the game starts. So we're going to go right-click add an event in our event sheet. It's going to be a system event. And we're looking for on start of layout. So when the layout starts, we want to destroy all of the enemies on the screen. So we're going to add an action. 
and we're going to click on enemies, the group. So this is the family we created of enemy one and enemy two. And we're going to go destroy. This basically means that any object belonging to this family will be destroyed at the start of the game. All right, let's try and make our game a little bit more fun. So right now there's no way to lose and you can't actually do anything to the enemies. So we're going to create a laser beam for the player to fire. So we're going to insert a new object. And we're going to call this laser. I'm going to make my laser purple. I'm going to resize our laser to be a little bit more appropriate. That looks like a good size. And we're going to give it some behaviors. So just drag it off screen to start with. And the behaviors we're going to give it are destroy outside of layout and bullet. Cool. Now we're going to go to our game event and this will be really quick. We're going to right click add an event and it's going to be a mouse event. On click left click and when we left click we're going to add an action it's going to be player create object or oh, spawn another object sorry spawn another object and we're going to spawn the object laser and we're going to make sure we change our image point to image point one so that's the image point we added at the start of the video and we're going to add another action underneath system and we're looking for weight so we're going to change this weight to 0 0.25 this will stop our player from spamming his laser and like cluttering the screen with your laser beams so let's add some code to actually destroy the enemies now that we've got a laser so we're going to add another event and it's going to be laser on collision with another object and this other object is going to be enemies. Not enemy one or enemy two, but the actual family enemies. Gonna add an action on this, and it's going to be enemies destroy. And we're also going to destroy our laser beam when it hits. If you tested your laser beam from last video, you would have noticed that it was firing out the right side of your screen. So that's not the correct behavior, so we're going to fix that up and hit right here. So underneath your left click spawn code, we're going to add another action and we're going to go laser. I'm going to rotate it counterclockwise 90 degrees. And we're going to move it just above this weight command. And we're going to try that. So ideally now it should be firing out the front and if it hits an enemy, it'll destroy them. Awesome, that looks good. So the last piece of code before we move on to extra for experts is losing the game. So how do we lose? So in our game, if the enemies hit either the player or this destroy bar, you lose the game. So we're gonna code that in right now. So we're gonna go back to our event sheet. I'm gonna right click and we're gonna go add an event. If enemies, on collision with, and it's going to be destroy bar. We want to add the action system restart layout. But we also want to do this for our player. Now we could either create a whole nother event and copy this code, or we can make this an all block, which means if the enemy hits the collision bar or the player run this code. So to do that, we just right click on our code and go make or block. Then we're gonna right click again and go add another condition. And the condition will be enemy on collision with another object. And we're gonna choose the player, just like that. And as you can see it is if the enemy touches the destroy bar or if the enemy touches the player and you can test that out on the next part where we do extra for experts i'll show you guys how to add a timer for ui 
and how to update it as the game goes on. Welcome to Extra for Experts. This is for anyone who wants to get any more advanced with what we're doing. So we're gonna add, we're gonna go to our, our layout and we're gonna add a timer. And then in our code, we're gonna increase that timer by one second every time one second passes. So the first thing we're gonna do is gonna, we're gonna right click on layer zero in the bottom right. And we're going to go add layer to top. We're gonna name this layer HUD. Then with HUD selected, we're gonna right click on our screen and go insert new object. And we wanna add a text box. I'm gonna name this text timer txt. Again, txt is the extension, so we understand that this object is a text object. Just gonna insert it, and I'm gonna make it the size, about this size. You want it to be a fair way across your screen. That way, if the text grows bigger, say you get to a, the time it reaches a thousand, it'll be able to go across your screen. All right, with your text selected, we're gonna change some of its properties on the bottom right side, bottom left, sorry. We're gonna change the text to timer, semicolon, space zero. We're gonna change the size to 30. We're going to make it so it is horizontal alignment center and vertical alignment center. That looks good. And now we're gonna to go to our code. So let's go to our event sheet and we're gonna add an event. Oh, before that, sorry, we're gonna add a global variable. So we actually need a variable to hold what the current time is. So we're gonna name this variable timer. Be aware you cannot name this variable time because time is an object. We're gonna add an event now. It's gonna be a system event. And if you scroll right to the bottom, you're looking for every X seconds. And you wanna keep this interval at one second. So every one second, we need to update timer, and then we need to display the text. So if we go add action, system, add to under globals and local variables, we're gonna add one to, ra um, not random, make sure you choose timer. So from this drop down, it should say timer and value one. And then we're going to display the text. So if we add another action, timer text, and we're gonna go set text. And we're gonna set this text, make sure you um, insert this text within your speech marks. Timer, colon, and we're gonna put a space, a white space. So it looks almost the same as what we did on our HUD. And then we're gonna add, um, we're gonna add the timer variable on the end. So to do this, we hold shift and press seven on your keyboard or we're looking for the ampersand. This and marker is called ampersand. And then we're gonna give it another space and we're looking for the variable timer. If you just click here, it is the global variable timer. Done. Now this would be all we need, except we need a way to reset this timer every time the game starts or when you die. So under on start of layout, we wanna add an action and it'll be system set value of global variable and it is timer. And we wanna set timer back to zero when the game starts. So if you just wanna try this out, as you can see, as the game goes on, the time goes up and then if you die, it goes back to zero.